So we're starting on chapter six, which has to do with systems of equations. So what does that mean? It means that you have two equations and you're trying to determine if they share a solution or they share all solutions or they share no solutions. So we can do that in three different methods, depending on what's given. So we're getting really good at graphing them. And when we graph them, we really like them to look like this, which is in that slope intercept form. So you would graph them and where your lines meet would be your solution. Substitution is when you single out an X or Y and you create a blob. Um, and what I'm, you, we'll get into that in a little bit. So what you're doing is you're just substituting your value in. I love elimination because you line them up and you're looking for matching coefficients that you can cancel out, where you can eliminate. And so that's a super easy one. I like this one and obviously this one the best. This one's a little um, more difficult. So let's get going. The first thing we're going to do is talking about the graphing of those systems. Now, many of you see an equation that looks like this and you freeze. You don't know what to do, but you have to solve for y. So it looks like what you're familiar with is the slope intercept form. And you don't have to do it this way, but it's, it's, it works very nicely. So here, if I was solving for f, for y, I need to subtract, I need to send the x over. The x is in the wrong side. So I am left with a negative 4y is equal to a negative 8x and a positive 24. These are not like terms, so you cannot combine them. And we like it for the x to be first. Solve for y, divide by 4. 4, negative 4, divide by a negative 4 to every single term. Now, if this was an inequality, we would reverse this inequality sign because we're dividing by a negative coefficient here. But we're not. We have, we're back to equal signs. So y is equal to negative 8 divided by a negative 4. It's positive 2x. 24 divided by a negative 4. Sorry, that should be a negative 6. Like that. Try not to do a plus negative 6 because that's confusing. Okay, y-intercept. Slope. We write slope as a fraction. If it's not in a fraction, we put it over 1. We need a rise and a run. So I'm going to start at a negative 6, which is down here. And then it says to go up. 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. I can keep going or get a straight edge because it's going to be important that we graph these with a straight edge. All right, next one, same sort of thing. So I am going to subtract 3x. I'm solving for y. Subtract 3x. I'm left with a negative 2y is equal to a negative 3x, and that's a positive 12. Divide everything by a negative 2. Don't freak out here, because 3 divided by 2 is just 3 over 2, and it's positive. Leave it as a fraction. Make sure it's simplified, and that's simplified, because you need a rise and a run. You cannot have something with a 1 and 3 fifths or anything. And that's a negative 6 again. So starting at negative 6, I'm going to go up 3, over 2. Up 3, over 2. All right. Last one. Subtract my 9x. 5y is equal to negative 9x plus 35. Divide everything by 5. Y is equal to a negative 9 fifths X. Again, that is okay. This divided by this is 7. 
So I'm just going to put him here, down nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, over five. And that is it. Okay. So let's go over which method is best. Um, when you're graphing, solve for y may not give an exact answer. So what they're saying is, um, here you don't really know what these values are, like this in-between spot. You don't know what that is, and sometimes that, that makes it hard. Um, make sure it looks like that, so graphing would be good. We'll use substitution if you have something that is just equal to those two. Then we'll just substitute those values in. Elimination, if one variable is the opposite of the other, you can cancel them out. And then if none of the above works, we can multiply to create opposites. So that's where we're going next. So when we're graphing, we are looking at a system means what values they share. What is, what is a value that both of them have? So if I look at this one, they share this value here. So that's one solution that they share. It is called consistent and independent. So both of these are kind of independent of another. Um, and they have different slopes. Different slopes. This one here, you don't know it. But they, can, they have unlimited, or what do we usually say? Unlimited solutions. Because basically this is a um, equation on top of itself. There's two equations here. So again, this is consistent, but it's dependent. So if it's one on top of the other, we're gonna need these words. Um, a clues, they'll have the same slope and y-intercept. The next one, no solutions. They share no solutions. They're parallel. They'll never touch. They'll never meet. It's called inconsistent. And how do we know? This time we know they have the same slope, but not the same y-intercept. And that's what makes them parallel. So let's go ahead and graph each of these. Make sure they're in slope-intercept form and see if they connect. So on this one, we've got our y-intercept and we have our slope. So I'm gonna start at one, two, three. This is to go, I'm gonna rewrite this. Downwards three, one, two, three. The two is positive, so that means I go to my right. And I'm gonna connect those. Make sure you're connecting these with a straight edge. All of you should have a straight edge. This one, I start at negative one. And it says go up one over two, up one over two. It's good if you can, the more points you can get on your graph, the better. And then this is where we're looking at. We're looking for this point here where they connect. So we have one solution, and that solution is 2 over 2, 0. Sorry, I had to take a short break, but here we go again. So on this one, you can do these on your own and then just check to see if you're correct. So this one's already in slope-intercept form. So y-intercept slope, so 2 over 1, and this is my y-intercept, so 1, 2, 3, up 2 over 1. I can't do it. So what I need to do is make both of these negative, because two negatives make a positive 2. So I'm going to go down to negative 1, down to negative 1. And again, I'm going to need my straight edge to connect these. You're going to have to use a straight edge 
and do it just right, otherwise you're not going to find that correct solution. Okay, this is not in slope form. So in slope form, we need to subtract 8x. I'm left with a negative 4y is equal to a negative 8x minus 12. Let's keep going. Divide by a negative 4 to every single term. y is equal to negative 8 divided by a negative 4 gives me a positive 2x. Negative 12 divided by a negative 4 gives me a positive 3. So positive 3 here, up 2 over 1. So it's got the same slope and the same y-intercept. So if I go up here, that means it's an unlimited amount of solutions. can't really see that because it's on top of each other. I want to make this thicker so you can see that's not just one line but two lines. I'll try to make that a little thicker. All right, so let's try this next one. We need to put it in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides. I'm left with a negative 2y is equal to negative x, a positive 4. Divide everything by a negative 2. When I do that, I can put a 1 here. So that just makes that a negative divided by a negative is a positive 1 half x. Positive divided by a negative is a negative 2. So on here, I'm going to start at negative 2. Go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. Let's try this one. Minus x minus x. Negative 2y is equal to negative x minus 2. Divide everything by a negative 2. y is equal to 1 half x plus 1. So starting at 1, up 1, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. And what you're going to find is that they're going to be parallel to each other. And if they're parallel to each other, there are no solutions. Um, and if you notice, this one had same slope, different y-intercept. This one had same slope and same y-intercept. Okay, so those are some clues. Let's see what's next. All right, that's it for this lesson.